Hi everyone. So this mini lecture is on noun and positives and you don't need to worry too much about the word. Maybe on a quiz I'll say use a noun and positive so you kind of have to remember what, what I'm talking about. Uh, and like all these lectures, to some degree you probably do some of this but Ask yourself, oh, wow, I never put a noun and positive at the beginning of my sentence or at the end. I'm guessing, if I had to guess, that you would put your noun and positives in the middle, um, which is great. At least you do them. Um, but try to sort of mix it up some. Okay, so let's look at the one example that I think you probably already do. Much to the amusement of the neighborhood, Boots... Brian Siamese cat had a double kink in his tail. So the noun of positive, the parts to remember in this case is that there is a comma. So I'll emphasize that by underlining the comma. And then Brian Siamese cat, that whole phrase I'm underlining as well. And then at the end, you mark the end of the noun of positive with another comma. So I'll underline that comma. Don't forget those commas. When you're putting it in the middle of the sentence, comma, noun of positive, comma. And I think usually if you're going to forget one, you remember the first one and you forget the second one. But you have to remember both of them. So what is a noun of positive? It's extra information that tells you something about a noun either before or after it. In this case, it, it's telling you more about boots. And this is sort of typical of what you'll write. You'll give me a noun, you'll give me the comma, then you'll do a little description about boots, and then you'll hopefully remember that second comma. That's great. You do this already. Um, just try maybe mixing it up. So let's do Oh, I have another example of one in the middle, a handcrafted piece of oak furniture. That tells you more about, I'll underline it, the bookshelf. So all this, including the commas, tells you more about the bookshelf that comes right before it. So that's, this is standard stuff. Like I said, you probably already do it. I have another one, large and hairy creatures. Another one, a human waste management, talking about the brother. And all these examples, they're pretty much the same. I give you multiple examples because if I only give you one, then someone says, could you give me a second or third one? So hopefully with all these examples, you'll be like, okay, I finally get it. Now, number five is different, and this is the one that you may not do, so pay close attention. A display of her family's wealth. In this case, mark the end of the noun of positive with a comma. And what it is, is telling you extra information about the designer purse. So in this case, in the other examples before it, it comes after the noun. In this case, it comes before. And that's why it's a little tricky and why you don't do it so often. You're like, what? It could come before? And it can, and you should try it at least once in your paper. It's super cool. And then number six is the example where you use it at the end of your sentence. Brian's honor students couldn't believe when Pee Wee stood up. I have no idea what this sentence is about. I made it up, but I don't remember what I was thinking. When Pee Wee stood up to the Hells Angels motorcyclist, I don't know if it refers to like Pee Wee's Big Adventure or something. I don't know. Um, and then here comes the noun, a positive, the biggest bully in the whole school. So note, I'm going to underline the comma, and then I'm going to bracket off the noun, a positive. And it is telling you more information about the motorcyclist. So this is when it's at the very, very last thing of the sentence. Come in the middle, come at the beginning, come at the end. And I would have to say the beginning one, number five, is the one I see the least. So try, try doing that. Um, 
In all cases, you can take this information out of the sentence and the overall coherence of the sentence stays the same. So it's extra information. That's important. Here's another one at the end. A gigantic mountain of ice cream and hot fudge. Tells you more about Maria's Sunday. The noun that comes right before it. Then, this is extra information to tell you about a strange voice, one that was high and squeaky. A peach-colored taffeta gown, another one at the end that tells you more about the ballroom attire. Now, there are a few things that whenever, that I want you to remember because whenever I ask people to do this sentence construction, they opt for something they already know how to do. It's something about the brain you, you, you grasp on the thing that, even though it's not the thing I asked, you're like, okay, I'll, I'll do this. Notice that in all of these examples, all nine of the examples, that there is no which, there's no that, there's no who, there's no whom. That's a totally different construction, and I bet you already know how to do that. In this case, I want you to be aware that oftentimes the word after the comma, a gigantic mountain, one that was high. Notice it's, it's the biggest. It's either a noun or an adjective. So it's not who, stop yourself. If you start to say that or which, say, oh, I'm doing the wrong construction. Brian's going to get mad. So just look. A display. A human waste management. That's sort of a weird one, but I think you'll get large, an adjective. So just try to do the thing that I'm asking and don't do the thing that you know. So no witches, no that's, no who's. Don't, I don't want to see any of those words. And then the thing that I've been emphasizing throughout, since it's the most common to do it in the middle, Pete Rose, a member of the Cincinnati baseball team, comma. Since you already know, try to put it at the beginning. A member of the Cincinnati baseball team, comma, Pete Rose. So just out of variety's sake, even though it feels a little weird to do it. Okay? And I say here, it's a little bit much. I say here that you should try for each paragraph, you should try doing one of these. I'd be happy if I saw one of these on each page. It's like on your first page, if you do one noun a positive, especially if it's one at the very beginning of the sentence, the very end, I would think that was fantastic. One per page. Try it. Don't overdo it. Like some people, they, every sentence has a noun a positive and then it starts to bug me. So I'll tell you if you'd overdo it. Okay, good luck.